guys are lit and happy Halloween. I am so freaking excited. I love this month. It just brings back so many good memories. I am a little bit sad because it seems like maybe where I'm at, they don't celebrate Halloween as hardcore more in terms of like trick or treating. These past couple of years, um, Xavier and I have just kind of been like waiting around trying to hand candy and nobody comes. So I think maybe it's more like popular to trunk or treating. I'm not really sure. In honor of Halloween, editing this before Halloween, I was supposed to get this video done by Halloween, but it was like 80% done. So we'll just say it's for like oh, Halloween. Weekend. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween. Halloween. Weekend. But in honor of Halloween, I dressed up. So I'm Little Bo Peep. I did the little ribbon. On the actual day, I'm going to have like my hair wavy and then like just like little ribbons right here. This is my costume. I am so, so happy. I got that whole outfit for like 20 bucks, which I'm really, really happy about because I put a bunch of shit on my Amazon cart and said I was going to get here after Halloween and I almost had like a, a little mini breakdown because I was like, no, I love Halloween. So I was able to find everything at Forever 21 for like 20 bucks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. So in honor of Halloween, I wanted to read a couple of Reddit stories that are just creepy. There was a man who lived in my street that my older sister and I named Trolley Man because he would walk up and down the street with a shopping trolley. Later we called him Scooter Man because at some point he acquired an electric scooter to scoot around. I, about nine at the time, was in the front yard while my dad was gardening and we saw him coming down the road so I went inside. He stopped for a chat with my dad about his lovely looking little girls. Dad naturally got defensive and told the man there are no girls that live here, go away. To which he insisted, oh, I think they do. And creepy smiled at my dad before going on his way. Oh my gosh, this brought me back memories. I was probably in fourth or fifth grade and learning to skate at my friend's house. I could hardly stay on my skates. My friend and her sister were a city block ahead of me. Great, experienced roller skaters. And I was struggling. Some man in the car pulled up alongside the sidewalk where I was trying to stay upright. He signaled me over and I said, I can't skate over there. And he said, walk in the grass by the sidewalk and you don't need to slide the wheels. Stupidly, I did and walked right up to his window. He had nothing on and a raging hard on, which I didn't actually know what it was slash meant. But I knew he was a creep. Not so stupidly, I took his earlier advice and took off running in my skates on the grass along the sidewalk, all the way past my friends and to their house. Over the next way too many years of life as a young girl through, well, through my age now, I have come to the conclusion that there are way, way more sexual perverts and straight up sick bucks among us than we can even imagine. They're every fucking where. There's a couple nearby you as you read this. It's that prevalent. I don't really understand the like creepy fascination with like younger girls. So there was this one guy I was going to catechism. No, not catechism. I was getting confirmed. This guy, I remember his kick name because he would always like message me. His name was like Lonely Boy 39 or 69 or something like that. And I would see him every Sunday bring his little kid. Maybe she was like, I was like 13 and the girl was like seven or eight or something like that. Every time he would see me, he would like smile at me really creepily. Later on, I would have a bunch of messages from this guy. There was even this one time I went to PetSmart and he was like, oh, I see that you're at PetSmart and I booked it so fast fast. I got so freaking scared. Yeah, eventually he left me alone. It's just like such a creepy thing to me that like this shit happens all the time. Just wish I could just you know what I mean? Like, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Ooh, I really like this one because it's like those two sentence horror stories. All my life, my parents have told me not to open the basement door, but I got curious and disobeyed them. What is the glowing ball in the sky and why does it hurt my eyes? I don't know if you guys have ever watched the movie, like The Room or something like that. It's like a little tiny room. Like that's where the, like, the little boy grows up. Imagine like not knowing what the sun is. I don't remember the case, but the dad raped his own daughter. He basically like stuck her in a basement and created this whole fucking trap for her. And she was there for years years and years. Oh my god. I definitely recommend to check that case out. Be weary because that case is heartbreaking. There's also a movie on it. It's less creepy. It's just more of a fucking tragedy to be honest with you. My mother's story. She had gotten out of the car to stretch during a long drive and she came upon a clearing maybe five minutes into the woods. On one side of the clearing was a tent with someone moving around inside of it. Inside the clearing was a pile of deer carcasses, maybe 20 in all, and one dead golden retriever on top. Oh my god, no. She was so freaked out that she ducked behind a bush only to find a set of women's lingerie and a pair of high-heeled shoes crammed under the bush. She ran and never looked back. I still get the creeps from the story. So that may be a city slash state roadkill dump. Most places won't pay for a rent 
surrendering plant to take them so they just go out to whatever open land and leave them to be reclaimed by nature. I keep telling myself that it was a rural dump site, but why was someone staying there in the underwear? Oh, that's so creepy. I hate that. I think if I was a mom, I would do exactly the same thing. I would fucking dip, but I feel like maybe call 911. I don't know because if you see something sketch, I feel like in your gut, I feel like that's the number one indicator if maybe something's up. Probably call 911. Okay, like, hey, I'm not sure, but like this is what I think. I don't know though. Maybe you should check it out. Have a clean conscience. Con con clean conscience. Conscience conscience Ugh, you ever have that when you're like saying word over and over and it doesn't sound right or when you like write a word and you're like why is it spelled like that whatever i know what word i'm trying to say so that one night in montana it was quite alarming to be surrounded by a completely silent forest there was not a single sound to be heard even the air was dead still with no breeze to rustle the dry leaves of autumn still clinging to the trees and it was honestly terrifying on that night there would occasionally be the snapping of a twig or some other such sound that normally would be lost in the other commotion but that night there was no background noise to mask the few sounds that did pop up and so all of those little twig snapping type things seemed a hundred times louder on that trip i slept in some very loud places like the night I pitched my tent right next to some train tracks that ended up being much more active than I thought. I shared a hotel room with a guy who snored and a bunkmate who talked in his sleep, both in the same night. But that night of absolute silence of the woods of Montana was the worst night of sleep of the entire 179 day trip. It was the loudest silence I've ever heard and absolutely terrified me. This gave me chills. I was out in Big Bend recently in a similar situation, literally straining to hear something, anything, but it was utterly silent, absolutely terrifying. I want to go camping really, really bad, but there's just so many like hiker, camping, you know, forest, national park, horror stories or creepy things that have happened. I just freeze. You know, what if there's like a fucking serial killer out there? But then the fire and the marshmallows and all that beautiful thing and the nature and the stars. But it's just so scary. But to like hear nothing alone in your thoughts, I just, oh, no. TLDR. Was out in the mountains for four days by myself. Felt like I was being followed over 30 plus miles. First night I slept not in my tent. It was destroyed and cut to pieces. On a two week solo backpacking trip, I had four days in seclusion between ranger station check-ins. On the first day of my seclusion, I felt like I was being stalked. As I lay in my tent that night, I could hear what sounded to me like footsteps around my camp, but never coming too close. In the morning, I checked all around and found no evidence of footprints or having any wildlife around me. I broke down camp and took off trying to put it behind me. The second night was the same thing. I grew so paranoid that when I would hike during the day, I would go over rocks, walk through streams, anything to try to break the trail so I couldn't be tracked. I'd go around a blind turn and then sit there for an hour waiting to see if something would come behind. At night, I couldn't sleep for more than 10 to 15 minutes before waking up. Finally, I got to the ranger station check-in and told them what I had been experiencing. I went and set up camp as close to the station as I could. Later, the rangers, they offered for me to sleep on their couch for comfort and so I could actually sleep. I accepted and stayed the night indoors. I walked out to my camp in the morning and it had been destroyed my tent was oh uh, no my tent was cut on the side sleeping bag ripped and my backpack turned inside out the rangers came and reported it took pictures and everything i ended up getting one of the rangers to give me a ride back to base camp and going home for the next day this is what i mean this just makes me fucking not want to go camping at all what makes you want to do it by yourself to challenge yourself and that's why you like it like it's just too much time alone in my thoughts and i wouldn't find it that enjoyable whoever was stalking why would they do that like what is it is it just to fucking scare you to let you know that he almost got you Ugh, goosebumps man Sorry for the novella. I was traveling solo around the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State and making various stops in the Olympic National Park. I decided to stop in Quinault for the first time and took a random road dead ended at a beautiful spot at the edge of the Quinault River. There was an ancient footbridge that led across the river, but it looked like it might collapse if I tried to cross it, so I decided not to. It was off season and I was not in a tourist area. I was the only one there. It was so unusually hot outside that I decided that I needed to get into that water. I backed my car all the way to the edge of the dead end road, faced it out in the direction I would need to leave and started hiking through thick brush down and embankment to the edge of the water. There was no path. It was a pretty rugged area. It was mid-fall and I didn't have a suit since I didn't plan on swimming. So I just took my clothes off and got in the water in my bra and underwear. I had a nice swim but I could not shake the feeling that I was being watched even though I was in the middle of nowhere. After about five minutes the creepy feeling was enough for me to want to head back so I started to climb out. Turn my back to the other side of the river and walk toward my clothes and shoes that I left behind. When I turned around there was a 
big tall man standing in plain view just across from me on the other side of the river, a higher up on his embankment than I was on mine. He was wearing a poncho made of animal pelts, had long hair full of sticks and twigs, and looked like he had been living out in the wild for a long time. We stood and stared at each other, me in frozen terror, for what felt like forever, when all of a sudden he frantically took off in the direction of the footbridge leading across the water. I grabbed my car key, tried to grab my clothes and shoes, but they got tangled up in some blackberry vines, so I left everything, and went running for my life through the thick brush and blackberries, barefoot in my underwear, trying to make it to my car before he made it across the river. There was no doubt in my mind that he was trying to harm me. When I made it out of the blackberries, I could see he was crossing the bridge toward me rapidly. Fuck that. I got in my car and flung my door open just as he arrived. I locked the doors while he pounded on the hood of my car, just screaming and grunting non-verbally. The moment he went for my driver's side door, I hit the gas and took off as fast as I could. I looked back and he was chasing after me. He must have run after my car for at least a mile until he faded from view. I was bleeding everywhere from running nearly naked through blackberries. I was wet, unclothed, shaking, and crying. Had I hesitated for literally 10 seconds longer, I don't think I would have made it out alive. Even typing this story out again all these years later, I'm starting to shake. I felt like I was being hunted. That is the only way I can describe it. I will never ever go back to that area since that moment I always bring a hiking buddy with me when I venture out into the forest. That day is going to haunt me for my life. I have had many years of therapy and that experience is still as vivid as that day it happened. I feel extremely queasy. Literally like what she said, if she would have waited another 10 seconds, who knows? And like the thing is, is like us as girls, is like no matter how hard we train and stuff like that, they're always gonna be stronger than us. Sucks to know that. In all honesty, a lot of us don't believe that anything is ever gonna happen to you. But then you still do things that are like not the smartest and you put yourself in situations, but because it's never happened to you, you're not like bringing a hiking buddy or taking like extra precautions. Like you never think like something like this would fucking happen. That is literally so fucking horrible. I'm just really happy that she is fine and she's able to fucking tell that story. The fact that he had the animal pelts and stuff like that could be an experienced hunter or whatever and the fact that he was pounding on her fucking car door and chasing her. That is so horrible. Holy shit. Anyways, we're gonna leave off in a happy note. Someone or something keeps sweeping my outdoor back porch the other day. I went out for a smoke and all the leaves and rotting pumpkins left over from Halloween were just gone. But my porch looks incredible. Ghost bro just doing bro things for his bro. I thought that was a little bit more lighthearted. So with that, I I think this is a good way to conclude our little creepy segment. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys are being safe and that you guys are dressing up for Halloween. I really, really appreciate you guys a lot. Happy Halloween and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.